Hello everyone and welcome to today's showcase on Dark Souls 3. Wow, it's been a while since I've worn this armor. Probably a good month, two months? I've been doing this for a short while now, haven't I? Anyway, when I did the pilot episode for this series, I did take one weapon as an example. It was a really, very early footage back in the original Dark Souls 3 when I thought about doing this. But I had to build up my character first. And do it as quick as I can. Now, that weapon was the giant axe. The great axe. <laughs> I was going over weapons I couldn't wield at the time, and I thought, okay, someone not really experienced the game might go for something giant. And think, okay, this will work. That's why I chose this example. Good times. But now, my character is more than enough to proper level, and I have more enough strength to wield this properly. So what can it really do is a better question now. Will it still be a hunk of junk that can't do any damage? Or will it be something better? The description reads, which is too damn long for me to zoom in, a great axe resembling a hunk of raw iron. If one possesses the inhuman strength required to lift the weapon, the great heft of the attack will send its foes flying. I kind of doubt the flying part, but we'll see about that. However, since every swing makes up the user's entire body, the attack leaves the wielder wide open to retaliation. Which is not that great. <laughs> and definitely not great. The skill is War Cry, which is sure to come across all the smaller axes. Let's out a spirit of War Cry that temporarily boosts attack. So, well, I'll be definitely using that a lot for this showcase. Well, visually, the weapon, well, there's no real world equivalent. This is literally inhumanly unwieldable. That wooden shaft that my character's holding onto would snap. After the first swing, more than likely. Real world equivalents probably weigh around 80 pounds. Just clearly unwieldable. Just bizarre. So there's no real world equivalent. <laughs> Maybe a statue exists. Probably not. Moving on to the stats. The physical, well, we got a lot. A lot of physical. When I first wielded, it, I had a negative 75 buff on it. It was about the strength requirement. Now, that's quite different. So, as much as I might leave left vault open from each attack, well, I best hope I kill my opponent in one hit, and with all that physical, I just may do that. Moving on from that, the tribute bonus. We got a D for strength and E for dexterity. I'm not sure why the dexterity bonus is even there. Why? I don't know. The tribute requirement, you need a lot of strength. As the weapon says, you need an inhuman amount of it. And that is true. If you have 32 strength, you're going for these heavy weapons. The dexterity requirement, well, it's 8. If you have 32 strength, you definitely have 8 dexterity. Moving on from that, the war cry costs the usual 20. And it is the weapon's amazingly heavy. But no surprise there. 16.0 has a lot of weight. So you better have light armor. <laughs> but yes, overall, heavy weapon that you best kill your opponent as fast as you can in as few attacks as possible. So, the animations for the Great Axe, well, the main attack, you drop it on an opponent, or chop. Power attack, you again, drop your axe on your opponent and drop it. Two hand attack, well, you're seeing a pattern here. <laughs> and no surprise, it's just more chopping. Every animation is the same. Then you got the War Cry, which has a more red few to it for a few seconds. And when you do this, your power attack changes. We do a little bit of an extra chop. And a sprint attack, you can guess, it's a chop. Alright, this weapon does require a titanized charge to upgrade, which is good. And every upgrade, you get quite a few points out of it. Pretty much, systematically, you get 15 to 20 points. So that's a lot. And the tree of bonus went to a C for strength, which is nice. So yes, you get a lot of a lot of power out of this for upgrades. A lot. Definitely a lot. So how well is the perform field? I think it's time for some vengeance that's long overdue for this weapon. Now, getting behind an opponent to do a backstab with this weapon is easier said than done. But it took a few tries, but there you have it. Close to a little bit, yeah, 600 some damage. Pretty much easily letting out any knight. 
and no common enemy would stand a chance against this. Though the, again, the swing animation is incredibly slow. Doesn't matter how you cut it, or chop it, it's still very slow. So let's try the power attack with uh, a bit of extra firepower. And there you go. Win a kill. Awesome. Now let's try this again, except now I'm going to test how well it goes to the shield. There's so few small attacks. Yeah, that's a figure. Two attacks. I'm not surprised. Any more, and this literally wouldn't work. Because <laughs> my character couldn't swing it probably four times. But moving on to bigger opponents. It does rather well. But the problem is, it's slow. Almost as slow as my opponent. That presents problems. And unfortunately, it's not big enough or heavy enough to get through the gargoyle shield. Which is rather unfortunate. But it did do enough damage to make the, sh the battle res reliability short. Despite the lack of, you know, speed on the weapon. Yeah. Against the Dark Knights, or Black Knights. I keep forgetting their names mixed up. This might be the hardest fight of them all, because of the opponent's speed. With their amazing speed and good rage and lengthy combos, this makes actually fighting them a bit tedious. Because weapon's not heavy enough, nor has the range or speed to actually properly fight them. So I get hurt a lot more than they do. But still, overly a very powerful weapon. Got the job done regardless. Moving on to the pros and cons of the Great Axe. On the pro side, you got a lot of damage being outputted by the weapon. It also gets through a shield pretty easily. And the special does add a lot more damage to your attack. On the con side, the weapon's incredibly heavy. It's very slow. And has very short range. And that's probably it for pros and cons. Moving on to the score of the Great Axe. Damage gets 9 out of 10 for obvious reasons. Reach gets 3 out of 10 for, again, obvious reasons. Animation gets 3 out of 10 for having the same attack across all four moves, aside from your power attack when you do your special. Formos gets 9 out of 10 since it gives a lot, a lot of strength out of it. Miscellaneous though gets only 4 to 10. Because, despite its large amount of damage, the weapon's incredibly short, and it's very slow. Where a lot of other heavy weapons do the job much better, and do almost just as much damage. That's why. So in total, the Great X gets 28 out of 50, which I'll give the label of mediocre. Even though it's above 25, there's still a lot better heavy weapons out there. Which could be said about a couple other weapons, but this weapon kind of felt flat, in my opinion. So you have it. A little bit long overdue, but it looked like we didn't miss that much. I'm not saying it's a horrible weapon, but compared to the other heavier weapons in the game, it kind of lacks quite a bit. Still, it's still an average pretty good weapon. If you don't have any other heavy weapon, it'll definitely get the job done. Just make sure you dodge after every attack. Ugh, especially against those bosses. They'll be none too forgiving, that's for sure. But anyway, that has been today's showcase. I thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care out there.